This is an overview of troubleshooting for the feeder meter control system. Number one, always clean the flow meter. Make sure that the solenoid has opens and closes during the cleaning process. Only disassemble parts is a final option. So if your system isn't operating correctly, turn on the controller. If the display illuminates and you can interact with the buttons in the menu, the controller is okay. Make sure that when you turn it on, it says 0, 0.0, you're in automatic, and that all of the lights are out next to the menus before you go feed. The easiest way to see how the system is operating, make sure your wiring is okay to enter onboard diagnostics, which is a little dot button on the right. You see your line voltage comes up on the screen. And as you hit the hashtag button next to it, that turns on and off the solenoid on the flow meter. And as you can see, the light illuminates inside the housing and you'll hear a click. This happens every time. Now let's make sure that we have our feed rate set correctly on one and two. And let's make sure we're in automatic. Check to make sure your calibration is set correctly. This is calibration for quartz. Um, anything can be calculated off of this. And we are set for both sides. Now we're ready to go feed. So what happens if the controller won't count? Well, the first thing we're going to look at is the flow meter. If the wiring is going to be a culprit, but the flow meter is where we're going to start. We're actually going to start with the sensor. This is the little green object on the top of the flow meter. Now this, you can test the whole wiring system right from here. What we're going to do is we're going to look first at the terminal, make sure that the terminals are clean, there's an A debris inside, and that the pins are set and in their socket slots. Next, we're going to undo the sensor from the flow meter housing. So we're going to clip the zip tie. And we're going to carefully back that sensor right out of the housing. And then we're going to hook it back into the harness once we get it out. Now, uh, you see I've got a magnetic clip on the end of my flashlight. And I'm just going to wave that back and forth in front of the end of the sensor. And you can see that that creates count on the flow. And this is how the flow meter works. So if this is happening, your wiring and your sensor are good. So let's replace the sensor now. We're going to very carefully re-screw this into that little brass nut or stainless nut that's inside of there. And do it from the sensor side, being mindful of the wire. And we're going to walk that all the way down until it just hits the base of the flow meter housing. Okay, and I'm going to give it just a little tweak past that. Now, we're going to grab pliers and we're going to tighten up the jam nut. Bottom one first till it's nice and snug. And then the top one just to lock it into place. And we're ready to go back. So put a zip tie on, hook to the harness, we can go feed. If the flow sensor is counting on the magnet but not on the flow meter, there may be debris inside. So let's try connecting the inlet hose to the outlet and pressurize it. This will eject anything from the inside. Also make sure you have a filter installed on the inlet side to keep debris out. If the controller counts but the flow does not stop, then our culprit is going to be the solenoid. So if you count up, our rate was at one, it just flew right past it. So we're gonna check with the solenoid. So make sure, run the diagnostic and make sure the light is turning on inside of this little housing. And if it is, and you're still not actuating your solenoid, then you have something inside of the solenoid itself. So we're gonna to need to remove the solenoid from the housing. Now I did this off the flow meter, but you can do it on it just as well. You can just disconnect right from the harness or you can take off this cap at the side. It's good to check this once in a while, make sure it's not corroded. Everything looks good. So I'm going to grab this nut at the bottom and we're just going to take it right off. Very careful because you have stainless steel and plastic together. I'm going to pull that out. That exposes your diaphragm and it also gives you, exposes the inside. Now you'll see that this is sort of a cottage cheese and that's what happens inside the solenoid is what we're going to clean out. Now this particular unit is only used once, so it's not too dirty. We're going to unscrew this big nut off the bottom, and you'll see that immediately you have a spring. So once you get the spring off, then you have the plunger rod that goes to the diaphragm itself, and that will slide out. Okay. And then you'll have your first set of pistons that will come out. Now your first piston has like a driver on the inside of it that will come out, so be careful you don't lose that. And then the second piston sometimes is the one that's hardest to come out, but usually if you give it a good whack, it'll come out. Yep, there we go. 
And now you just, you'll clean all of these components and reassemble them the way they came apart. It'll look something like this. Okay, once the system is ready to go back together, we're gonna clean everything up first, make sure it's good and clean. And once your components are clean, we're gonna go back together here. So let's see, the first piston rod goes in. And then the secondary piston goes in with the little driver. Make sure all of those holes and orifices are cleaned out as well. This little, the piston rod itself will go in. And then we can do the spring. And finally, the, the hex nut over the outside. And make sure your O-ring is installed there on the end of the flange. And then get it tightened up a little bit. Uh, and you can reinsert it. Now again, plastic with stainless steel, so be very careful. And just take it right down until that O-ring seats. And then you can put the rest of it back together. Don't forget the washer. That helps you keep contact with the solenoid. And you'll have to kind of push down on the solenoid a little bit and push on the crown nut. And then we're going to reinstall the uh, wiring connector and you'll be ready to go again. If you need more information, please contact Johnson's Innovations. Thank you very much.